Hey, are you ready for a fun JavaScript lesson where we're going to create some interactive web page content? We're going to bring our HTML code to life with JavaScript by selecting the page elements using the document object, making some updates to the page elements, and then also making interactions where we're listening for click events on those elements that are going to run some code in JavaScript file. So clicking those, we've made them clickable. We're also tracking the number of clicks that have happened on the elements. And we're outputting, updating, and outputting a different result within the text value of that page element. And that's also going to be changing directly within the elements code that we're going to see being output within the page. When we refresh it, it's going to revert back to the original code, how it was run, and allow us to create the same interactions over again. So that's all coming up in this lesson. Let's open up the HTML and I'll show you how you can add event listeners to your page elements. So we do have a couple elements on the page, output one and output two. You can add JavaScript as an attribute with an event on that attribute within the element itself. So you can add something like an on click that will run a particular function within JavaScript. So we'll just call this fun one. So what this is going to be doing is this is going to invoking the function fun1 within the JavaScript code. I'm also going to update this to word wrap so that we can see the entire contents of the HTML page. And now let's go into the JavaScript code. I've created a new file called app4.js. And then within app4.js, we'll create a function called fun1. And what this function will do is this will just output into the console and it'll just output the word hi. So every time that output one is clicked, it's gonna be invoking the function and outputting the word hi within the console. Let's make some updates to it, where we've got a value for counter. We'll set that up as zero, and every time it gets clicked, we're gonna increment counter by one, and we'll output that value into the console. So we've got the string value of hi, and we're going to add the value of counter to that. So refresh, and every time we click it, we're seeing that we're getting the new output of counter. So this is one way that you can add interaction to the page element. If you are, if you do have a very complex website, you might have multiple pages, and these ones are going to be hard to update when you're referencing the JavaScript code. So one of the best ways to do it is to actually add this in to the JavaScript code and keep it separated out from your HTML code. And we're gonna select that element and add the event listener running the function within the element without touching the HTML code. And that's gonna be done by interacting with the document object. And the document object is the rendering of the HTML content by the browser. You can see the output of the document object if you do a console directory and you just type in document, it will show you the rendering of the document object. And this is a giant object that is created by the browser that contains all the information about the web page that the browser is using in order to display it. So we've got different values that are contained within there, such as property for URL. So this is the URL of the web page. We've got the base URI, the character set that's being used, the various children, which is going to include all of the HTML elements. So they're all counted as children within the HTML. And then within the HTML object, it's going to have more children. So you can go various levels down in order to access your content. So within the main HTML structure, we have the head and the body. So this is going to correspond with what we have within our HTML code, where we've got the main HTML. Within HTML, the two children are head and body. Within the head, we're going to have children that are going to be the title. So going down to the children, we see that we've got the title element there. And within the body, we're going to contain the two, the three tags that are within the body. So going into the body and then navigating down to the children of the body, we see that we've got the two element divs and then the script tags. So that's all contained within the body of the HTML. So the document object has a lot of information contained within it. And just as we saw with objects before, where we can reference object information, we can also set that object information.
And this gives us the way that we can create interactive and dynamic web content using JavaScript in order to interact with this virtual representation of the HTML code. Go into our JS file. And from before, when we were writing to the HTML page, we could use the document write. And document write is a method or a function that's contained within the document object that allows us to interact directly with the web page and write content when the web page is rendering out and encounters this JavaScript statement. So that's where we were able to write content into the web page using the document object. And just as we can write into the web page, so if we were to now go into the elements and look within the body, we've got a text value of hello that's being added into the body and that's what's being displayed. So when this is done and this is added in, I can also add that in as a document write and this will overwrite the entire document content as I've run it within the console. So that also means that if I were to refresh it, my original code goes back. If I open up to a separate web page, so if I go over to Google, open up my console and do document write where I write hello, it's going to overwrite the existing document content that's sitting within the Google web page within this instance, and it's going to just write the word hello. So it's not going to change the web URL, but it's still going to be able to overwrite that content. And once I refresh it, that change is going to be gone because that change is just for that particular instant of the document rendering. So the JavaScript is able to manipulate and make changes within the web page code. We can select elements from the page and it's got a few different methods that allow us to make selections of those page elements. So using the document, and I'll just write it within the console. So using the document, we have methods such as the query selector, query selector all, which allow us to select page elements. And we're going to be selecting the element with a class of output. So it's expecting a parameter, which is going to be a string format. And in order to indicate that we're selecting a class, just as we do with styling, we prefix it with the dot. If we're getting a an value, an element with an ID, we're going to prefix it with the hash. If we're just selecting the element itself by the element name, then we're just going to be just we're, we're not prefixing it with anything and we can select the various divs on the page. If we're using query selector, it's, it's going to return back the first result that it finds on the page. So in this case, it's going to be returning back the first result that has a div of a div element and returning that back as a response back. And just as we saw with functions, once we run this and it does have a return back, then we can assign that to a variable. So when we hover over it within the console, that's going to be hovering and selecting that first output element. So we can assign it. And because this is going to be an object, we can use const. So let's assign output one variable using the same function that we just used within the console where we're using the query selector. And we're going to select the element with a class of output. And then we'll use the console log and we'll output output one into the console. Let's refresh the page. And now we've got the element object location from within the DOM being referenced by the variable output one. So whenever we select output one, we're referencing that particular element object. If we want to see the contents of output one, we can use a console directory. And what that will do is that's not going to that's going to output the entire directory of that element object. And just as we saw before, we can navigate down and they have a lot of different properties and values that are associated with those elements. So we can open up the directory. We can see the children. So if there were some elements that were contained within there, we could see those being listed. So right now there aren't any children within output. We can check to see the child nodes and the nodes are going to include text values. And the current text value for this is going to be a value of output one. So just as we can see the content, we can also interact with that content. So the various properties such as text content for output one is going to return back the current text content of that page element. And because this is an object, we can assign a new value to it of hello world. So we're assigning a new text value to it. And that's going to also change the value that's being displayed within the web page allowing us to use JavaScript in order to make updates to the web page by selecting the document object. And just as we can make the selection of the element, let's go ahead and we'll select the other element with an output two. And we want to select this element from the page. 
If we use query selector and select output or div, we're just going to return back that first result. So let's go ahead and use query selector all, and I'll update this to outputs, and we'll refresh it, put outputs into the console, and this is what's going to return back what's known as a node list. So node list is very similar to an array where we've got a length property, and we do have each one of the elements contained, and we can reference it via the index value. So now if we want to reference the second element, we can do outputs using its index value of one, and that's gonna reference that second element. The first element is gonna also be referenced as outputs zero. In addition, we're already out referencing it as output one. So both of those variables are gonna be referencing that same element on the page. So any changes to outputs with index value of zero or output one is gonna be referencing that same element. So those changes are gonna be updating that same object value. So let's go ahead and we'll take outputs one and we'll add an event listener to outputs one. So using outputs with the index value of one, we're gonna add an on click and the on click is gonna be running a function. So in this case, we're gonna set it to run fun one. Let's refresh and now when we're clicking it, we've added an event listener, which is running function one. Notice that when we're referencing the function, we're not invoking it, so we're not using the rounded brackets, we're just referencing the function code, which is gonna get invoked whenever the onClick event is triggered. We can also add click events with the function code, so running an anonymous function, and this one will increment the counter and just output the value of the counter into the console. So let's refresh, and now that's updating and outputting the value of the counter in the console when we're pressing the first one. Let's also take the value of output one and assign a new text content value to it, and we'll call it click, and then we'll add the value of counter to it. So every time it gets clicked, it will update the click value within the text content. And we'll do the same thing for within the function one, where this will just say output, and we're out updating the output one, which we could also use the outputs with the index of one and update the second element on the page. Now that it gets clicked, let's refresh. And now this is updating with the word output and the counter value. And because the counter value is referencing the global value, either function is updating that same value of counter and incrementing it by one when it gets clicked. Let's add one more element into the HTML and we'll give it an output of three. And now we refresh it. So we have that third element on the page with an output of three. And that's gonna also be contained within the outputs query selection of the node list. So it automatically picks up the third one because it matches the query of all the elements with the class of output. There's another way to add an event listener. And now we're gonna be selecting the outputs with the index of two. You can always double check to make sure you get the right element within the console. And what we're doing is we're adding an event listener. And the event that we're adding is gonna be a click event. And the function that we're running is still gonna be fun one. So let's refresh. And now we're running the fun one function with the add event listener. So this is another way to add an event listener and using either the on click or the add event listener. Those are both correct ways to add event listeners to your page elements. The earlier versions of browsers, all were using on click. The add event listener allows you to add multiple event listeners to the same element, whereas the on click just restricts it to the one event, as well as the add event listener, you can attach different parameters affecting the behavior of the event, such as parameters where we can control how the event listener reacts, either bubbling up or bubbling down. So if you have elements that are contained within other elements, different events, the add event listener will give you more control over how those events are handled. The on click is similar to what we saw with the inline JavaScript, except once we place it within our JS file, that gives us more control over the scope since we're writing within the JavaScript instead of within the HTML. One of the other disadvantages to on-click is that those can be overwritten, whereas when you add an event listener, you'd have to remove the event listener in order to remove it from the functionality of the element. So once again, both methods are correct, and you can select either one to add events to your page depending on what your requirements are. So now it's up to you. Create some, in, select some of your page elements, add some interaction to those page elements 
using JavaScript, update the output of those page elements, again using JavaScript, and you can be ready to move on to the next lesson.